Hello, my name is uh, Von Steinstrom, the president of the China Speakers Bureau, and today we speak with Zhang Lijia, one of our speakers, uh, and who just finished in January 2017 uh, a, a marvelous book, a novel on prostitution in China. And one of the more striking uh, features in that book is the not only the position of the women, but that it seems to be a very, uh, in most cases, a voluntary choice by women to go into prostitution. There's, of course, money involved, but it's different from what I see in other parts here in Europe or in other, where prostitution is framed as being part of organized crime, very violent crime often, uh, human trafficking and, and other problems. Now, Lija, situation in mm -hmm. China seems to be slightly to welcome to this uh, hangout. Uh, Thank situation you. In, situation in China seems to be very different from what we see in this part of Europe in, when it comes to prostitution. Can you uh, explain a bit what's happening? Right. So I would say that the vast majority of women in China get into the trade on their free will. And a few women are trafficked and a few are controlled by pimps. There, sometimes there are pimps. In one case I, heard, I know, um, the husband functioned as a pimp. But uh, in most cases, women, uh, they are not controlled. They enter the own trade on the free will and if they if you want they can change from one establishment to another uh, but um, why you would ask why would a woman get into the trade uh, I would say it's um, poverty and in many cases women um, suffered some tragic or trauma experience uh, if one I know one I know she fell for a wrong guy, a kind of criminal, and she fell pregnant, and um, she kept the child and she had to support herself. Um, another one was abandoned by her husband. Uh, another one uh, ran away from her abusive husband. Another one got divorced, and her family wouldn't have her back. And, and also her contract land was already uh, with her ex-husband's family. So. Uh, the woman and divorced woman in the countryside often a very very difficult situation. In others, in, apart from in um, in other cases, um, the most majority of women are from the countryside. A few laid off workers, and they are mostly uneducated and skillful. Uh, yeah. so uh, 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 how did you see the uh, the position of of women in in society like? I've been uh, quite a long time in Shenzhen. I've talked to uh, uh, women workers and women prostitutes, and they saw more or less go being a working lady was also something more negative than being a non-working lady, a prostitute. It, it, it seems to be a kind of move upwards in the social ladder. Of course, I mean, as I said, the, for many women, they made a rational choice given limited uh, options, the job options they have. I'll give you one example from uh, one woman I interviewed in Shenzhen. She originally came from Shanghai and she worked uh, at a, a show factory. And then one of her friends working in the factory got a job uh, working at this massage parlor and she made more money and uh, her friend made more money and uh, she also didn't have more flexible with her time uh, and, and she was spared from this, uh, you know, the drudgery of working at a production line and also money uh, was better so she made the move um, and of course she was from a poor family and her family was just demanding money from, from her. Yes, um, it's, there's of course the temptation of money. And uh, I talk about the personal circumstances and some people suffered from unfortunate personal tragedies. But also if, if you look at the broad social perspective, women getting into prostitution because of rural urban divide, you know, and also because uh, the hookah system, which limits women to have some good uh, important opportunities in the city, uh, you know, in the poor area, um, the women are, the resources for education are often given to the boys. So there are some broader social uh, issues as well.
uh, not just they are in some ways they are also the victim and they can yeah but it's, it's more sorry yeah it, it, it's, it's more the the lack of education the edu the the economic force it's not mm -hmm. part of organized crime no, it's not always not nice. I, and, and I said in most cases, it's a woman have were forced into it, not forcing, get obliged, sorry, I should say, obliged by the personal circumstances. But in a middle class, up class uh, establishment, in some cases, women made the choice because of the life, made the, it's, it's a case of a lifestyle choice. Uh, because in this profession, they can make money uh, make lots of money and make money quickly. Uh, for example, in Beijing, there in Beijing in Wangfujing, there's a, a place uh, called uh, um, Heaven on Earth. It's a high ranking. Uh, in a few years ago, there was an incident. A girl working there uh, found dead in her in her place, and they found twenty thousand, uh, two hundred thousand yuan cash in lying around in the house. And they, they can earn lots of money in this kind of a high rank, high class places. Yeah, so, so, of money is definitely a factor. Because in, in here in, in Europe, it's mainly the NGOs and to a large degree also sex workers themselves who organize themselves in, 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 in getting things in. How is the position of NGOs towards the sex workers in China? Unfortunately, the, the sex workers in uh, get a very little support, uh, order from the government, not support, no support from the NGO. There are about less than a dozen NGOs in China. Um, they exist in a grey area and struggle for survival. They often have to register as a company and have to pay tax. Um, you know, NGOs in China is a difficult to. to exist to start with and not uh, let alone an NGO in a sensitive area as a prostitution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the, very, very difficult. Yeah. The, the government is very much uh, criminalizing prostitution. Uh, is That's not good for the position of NGOs, I, I presume. all aspect of the um, prostitution, soliciting, selling, buying, all uh, are illegal. Uh, and it's very, very difficult. Um, they, yes, they get a very, very little support, um, unfortunately. And they also, because the um, NGOs, um, because they try to, because it's illegal, so women try to stay in a low profile. So in the West, you see women, they organize themselves so that's not the case in China. They they try to keep it low profile. So um, yeah, this is uh, quite an unfortunate situation for them. Okay, but but I think it's important also for people who read your book to know that the situation of prostitution in China is very different from uh, that in other parts of the world. Less uh, organized <laughs> crime and and and. Um, well, it would be a good idea to get some uh, of these women as uh, spokespersons to, uh, but uh, that's probably hard with the current uh, government policy, I guess. Some people, um, I, actually the, the line broken up, I couldn't hear you, but uh, some women have, uh, for example, this uh, former prostitute I know, she now runs the NGO, she has been attending conference and talking about uh, attending international conference and talking about the situation, what is what it's like uh, as a sex worker in China. So that's quite encouraging. Another thing I would say that, you know, this is not a, some people may romanticize the life of, uh, of sex worker uh, or eroticize their life, but it is a hard life. On the other hand, like as every, they, their, their life is not totally bleak either. And they do enjoy the power brought to them by money. And as some <laughs> of them, you know, they, they, the, the girls, they, they have lots of fun. They often, you know, I, I spend time with them. They often joke, they're making fun, uh, you know, Joe tells funny anecdotes, you know, about the clients. Uh, they'll be very happy. They have a, a they call Mr. One So, it was, 
Uh, well, it's very, it's very good to hear your, your, it's very good your perspective on this one now. Yeah. We, we, Hearing some uh, technical problems here too. I hope the, uh, the recording is okay. We'll check that later. Yeah, and we uh, uh, we move on and see you for uh, very soon.